And that, that, that is that, you that it. Yeah. So that you don't have to touch. Right. But right. when I, when I interview someone, mm-hmm. um, you know, sometimes there's stuff I don't necessarily want to air, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's sometimes where I have to re-ask a question, you know, so I, I make it, you know, the phone rings, I cut it out, a dog barks, I, right. you know, unless I can't, right. unless right. I can't, you right. know, that kind of stuff. So it's like, there's a lot of, um, after two years, when I'm even talking with someone, mm-hmm. I can self-edit. I'm like pre-editing in my head. So right. if like, something happens while I'm talking, I'll just say it again, knowing I'll edit that first part out. Right. And so, <laughs> but um, I only put my podcast on YouTube because it's, some people like to listen to it there, you know, so I figure why not? I mean, if it only gets 50 views, whatever. Right. And, you know, so, you know, my main focus is podcast apps, which is right. all audio. And right. I, you know, they, some of them do video, but I, I, a friend of mine was doing a video podcast, putting it on Apple. And yeah. next thing I know, my phone's full. And I'm like, dude, you got like three episodes out and you filled up my phone because they're like 400 <laughs> whatever yeah. gigs. Full of, full of, full of storage. I'm like, who's listening to a podcast? I'm walking, I'm running, I'm in the car. I'm not watching a video while I'm listening to Apple podcasts. You know, so, right. so, uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's all that. So Nice. That's cool. nice, Kristen. What you got going on with the podcast? Uh, I'm trying to like revamp it because um, when my husband got sick last year, I kind of just stopped all social and stopped my uh, that. So the past years, it's been kind of like a whirlwind of personal stuff. But now, like everything's good, so now I'm kind of like deciding like how I want to start it back up and what I really want to focus the conversations on. I kind of think um, there's certain things I want to change. So um, just kind of in the preliminary stages of like relaunching like a, the second season so trying to yeah. figure that out now but it's always about conversations yeah. i like to just you know I, I bartend so i like to bring real authentic conversations with people because i think there's so many interesting people that have different stories and i think that a lot of times we don't hear just real authentic conversations unedited just you know the way you, you would just meet them at the first time and that's what i love about being a bartender so i think there's something special about you know, finding commonalities with people from all different walks of life that a lot of people don't realize. And then when you have a conversation, like, oh, shoot, I, I kind of do that too. Or, oh, I didn't think I would have anything in common with that person. I wouldn't think I want to listen to this conversation. And then you get something out of it. So that's what I think I'm going to try to do with season two, more of those conversations. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So how's the, um? I feel like we don't take advantage of the lives, like the live streams, of like social media. Mm-hmm. Exactly. think. Yeah. I, I, I mean, mean, I, I would say that I'm all the time just getting into to, that. Like, I, mean, that's how I, I have my own separate, like, I do a podcast I do during from COVID, the podcast. Um, so five nights a week during the that's first why lockdown. Like, and then I, I moved it to a um, one-day-a-week show when honestly, it takes a um, go live. life got back I don't open. Know and then I launched a podcast also. So it's going to to everybody but, um it i haven't a, really going live that's a lot to go live. the first live i've done in quite a while and i feel like i'm getting out of my comfort i do think that there's a lot of opportunity if you do have Money. a podcast or other things that you can That's kind of um, maybe prop people over there or, or kind of it's, it's a great way to promote and it's a great way to kind of um, maybe chop, you know, chop it up with some people. So I definitely think I got to get back into doing more lives. I don't know what you think, Jeff. I think live's great. And it's interesting, like one of the reasons I don't edit video is I think when you listen to something live, mm-hmm. it sounds fine, right? But if you're listening to just audio, you start to hear all the imperfections and the things that you don't really catch when you're watching something live because your brains, I think, work in a little different. And so you don't hear, you, know, you might not have heard them go huh, 50 times, you know, <laughs> it's like, but when you're just focused on the audio, that kind of stuff does it. But I love going live. I, I, I do think it's, it's a lot of fun. I don't do it like every day, just once, once a week. And, you know, it's, it turned out to, it started as a way to, just kind of hang with my friends and be, you know, doing that and, you know, kind of putting a show, you know, in a show format where we could just kind of chill. But, um, but yeah, there's something freeing about just being alive and knowing what's going on. It makes you think a little clearer too, when you're talking. I I like the idea of that other show, the, what is it? Shows that you should pitch. What is is that called? What is it? Your show called again? The second one? Oh, Oh, crossing the streams. Okay. All right. Awesome. Are you a, you a writer and are you a writer and comedian or? 
I am a stand-up comedian, sort of a little retired since when COVID hit, and I ended up started focusing on the podcast and kind of focusing on that, which takes up hella amount of time. And so I do, I do. We, I just did a weekend. I'm doing one in a little bit, but I mean, I used to do, you know, uh, tons and tons of weekends every year, but you know, I did it for over 18 years. So, but yeah, then I kind of moved away from that. So I just sort of enjoy being able to be, you know, if I can call myself quick witted <laughs> yeah, with my guests and stuff, you know, it's like, it's just, that's sort of the application now. Everybody can see each other, right? Yeah. Yes, that's what it was. I couldn't see everybody. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I couldn't see. Everybody. No, it was fun. It was fun watching you two talk and not realize you both. Didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a connection. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, it was I mean, great. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I knew, I knew you, you. I knew you just didn't know. So that's what made it so funny. <laughs> no. I'm glad I know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, we, uh, we were trying to talk about like the taking advantage of live streams. Oh, Jason! Uh, Jason Conrad says I'm the best. Thanks. <laughs> I know. What's up, Jason? Sorry. Uh, cool. So yeah, live streams. Who else? I mean, I use, I use Streamyard. I don't know what you guys use, but I found that to be like the easiest. Yeah. One of the easiest ones. So. Yeah. Streamyard is great. It's like really easy to work. It's very easy to manage, and like, and then I like that is in real time too. So you can like answer comments and things like that in real time, and not having to wait <laughs> until after. Um, but yeah, I love Streamyard. It's a really good platform. Dang. Absolutely. I don't use it. <laughs> what do you What do you use to go live? I saw you're going on Twitter Spaces later, and then uh, then this, but. This this is like Instagram Live is like the only thing that doesn't connect with any of those live platforms. Like you can go live everywhere, but you have to literally be running it like this as well. So it's a little you think at some point they would catch up because you can go live on Facebook. I go live on Facebook. Right. You know, the only problem with going, you know, the problem with going live is it's hard to track metrics because like when you push it to every single place. Right. So I push it to my Facebook, uh, my show Facebook It's on Twitch where I pull uh, They're kind. They average it to one viewer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not big on Twitch, but then uh, and then YouTube and then Twitter and uh-huh. each one is its own instance, you know, so like one can get like a thousand views and another one can get five, you right. know, so it's like it's hard to actually know how many overall people are watching. That's that's kind of the problem with. I think going live is that the analytics aren't easy for you to track. Yeah. <laughs> but I found out. Right. How, how important y'all think self promotion is? Very, very, very important. I feel like you should be your own walking billboard. Like I'm at work right now, but normally if I'm like out and about, like I always have my podcast t shirt. I don't care where I am. I don't care if I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm going out for a jog. I always have my podcast t-shirt on because, you know, word of mouth. And if people don't see you wearing your brand, how are they going to know about it? You know, and I always keep business cards. I always have them somewhere handy in my purse, in my pocket or somewhere else. I believe that. I mean, it takes a lot of work, but, you know, you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So I really just like it's very, very important. I agree. I agree. How about you, Kristen? I totally agree. You know, um, I always had business cards. I'm a bartender, so I get to self-promote very easily because I come in contact with so many people. So when you bring up, oh, I have a podcast, oh, what's it about? And what, where can I find it? And a lot of times people just look it right up at the bar and just mm-hmm. I fall in right then and there, and they'll go back and listen to it. Like, oh, I like that episode with this person. So I definitely think there's so much competition. You have to be – I mean, it depends on what you're looking for to get out of it also. I think if it's yeah. – passion and you want to have cool conversations and something you just enjoy then that's great if you want to make it monetize and, and have it be your business then you've got to be a self-promoter like you're saying because otherwise uh there's a lot of them out there and you're just going to be one of many. one of them. so mm-hmm. really, but you're actually trying to get out of it yeah i agree yeah I, it's a uh, yeah very important i mean like so like on my facebook feed like, I mean, after a year and a half, maybe, you know, or so, 
<laughs> the running joke became anytime I posted anything anywhere, they would reply with, hey, do you have a podcast? Or as a joke, you know, or hey, you know, this guy has a podcast? Because I guess I talk about it a lot. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I know that people hear, but that doesn't mean they're listening. But the, it's to the podcast. So I found also that now that I have over 150 episodes and, you know, I talk to the TV film on my classic conversations podcast, I talk to TV film stars. Right. And so people are always asking, well, who's your most famous person? And I go, it depends who <laughs> is asking Correct. because, because their people's frame of reference are completely different. Mm -hmm. One person might be the, Oh my God, you got this person. And then the next person's like, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> you know I mean? So I found that like, as I got, you know, over 150 episodes, now people can go in and say, I'll listen to this one, this one, and this one, you know? So whereas in the beginning it was like, well, you know, if they weren't into exactly who I was talking to though, you know, in my heart and mind, I'm like, I'm having a meaningful conversation with all these people. You'll, if you don't know who they are, you will. And you'll, you'll want to go listen to their stuff or watch their stuff. And that's mm -hmm. sort of my goal that, you know, but you know, that's, that's, I found like later on, I was like, Oh, people don't just listen straight through to a podcast. Not always. Right. They they'll cherry pick. And I didn't realize that early on. And then later on, you know, now it's, it's something I embrace a little bit more, but you know, but yeah, it's self-promotion is I put it out on every platform. You never know. I mean, I just got a random listener. I don't know who it is listening to my Loretta Sweat one that I posted yesterday. She's like, can you send me the link? I'm like, sure. Oh, I liked it. It was so great. Thanks. I'm like, thanks. You know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, so it's like, you never know. So you got to do it. That's the thing. You got to show up, don't, you know, every time. And then you never know when the right time is going to be. Right. How, how y'all feel about I know a lot of people say you should uh, narrow down and stick to one thing, but I always do like five to ten. How, how do you feel about that? I, if you can, you know, certain things you can repurpose easy, right? So you can, you mean like on platforms, people talk about niche on platforms. I, I don't think, you know, Facebook I think is great. So people know what I'm doing when I bump into them. <laughs> I mean, but um uh, I, you know, if you create a reel, it's easy to repurpose it on uh, YouTube uh, shorts, which if you guys aren't into is pretty hot right now also, but it's the same format and same thing with um, um, TikTok, right? And so, I mean, I'll put the same thing out. It'll do great on reels or, or on TikTok. I'm not big on TikTok. And uh, I mean, I love it, but I'm not big on TikTok. And uh, sometimes YouTube <laughs> shorts will get six views and sometimes I'll get a thousand. I don't know. So yeah. you never know. Same video, you know, so you never know how they're going to push it. So again, it's like, if it's easy to do it, why not push it out? You know, so. Because the attention span of people is like, you know, you're in a really great conversation, but not everybody really wants to listen to a whole entire conversation. So if you have like a little piece that you can kind of, they might be like, ooh, I like that point of view. I want to hear the whole thing. Then they know where to go to get the whole entire thing. So I think that's what's really interesting about the, how much opportunities there are. I was, that's that, that that Jeff talked about uh, YouTube shorts because that's something I was uh, looking into to try to get more information because I think that's really great that they have that now too. Um, but I think um, that's what's, you know, you have so many opportunities to put your content on so many different places. And it's kind of like, that's kind of the best way to see like, okay, where is it, you know, who's really responding to me and who's really vibing with me. And then it kind of helps you find out where to kind of put more of your energy into sometimes. I really feel like um, all the different platforms are almost like different languages. They all have different things and different ways to kind of put the content out. So sometimes when you, like when, when Jeff was saying, they just push all your content to many places at the same time. It doesn't really, you don't really know who's really getting it. And then, but you can kind of, then when you sit there, when I like when you're live, because you can kind of see where the people are com commenting from. But there's just so many different opportunities of how to put it out, put content out. But I think consistency um, is probably the best thing you have to do. And that's why when I relaunch, I want to relaunch when I'm ready because I don't want to have it. I want it to be consistent because people want to know that they're going to find it when you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. You'll never be ready. Just launch. I'll launch again. I have, a, I have to do, do it. For though. That's what I have to do. So got to get on that. So. Right. Um. As far as like networking, mm -hmm. how, do you have like a system? How important do you think like 
the system is. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it was interesting. Like early on, I, re I thought, I'm going back two years now when I started or so, like I thought my friends and family would flock to my podcast, you know. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's always telling me how funny I am with my Facebook posts, or, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm like, oh, well, here's an extended version. You're, why wouldn't you love this? Yeah, that, that did not happen, right? It was like, I always used to joke, I could put out a picture of my, uh, uh, you know, a promo for my podcast and you could hear crickets. If I put out a picture of a pie I made, I'd get 300 likes in a second. You know what I mean? Not a second, but you know what I mean? It's like, they flock to it. Oh, that's such a great pie, Jeff. Thanks. <laughs> but what about this thing that I spent hours on to put together? And then I presented it to you and put my heart and soul into it. And like, and then just let it sit there for you to <laughs> digest and, and judge me on that. You got nothing. You got nothing on that. Okay. You know, so whatever. So, but I, and then, and at first I was like, oh, podcasters, why do I want to have anything to do with podcasters? Because they want everyone to listen to their show and I want everyone to listen to my show. But what I, I learned very, very quickly is that that was, I was completely out, wrong. Everything was a hundred percent flipped. Whereas the podcast community and other podcasters, other streamers, other creators are actually the most supportive of your show and we're, are the ones that will most help you. There's a, there's a very rising tide, uh, helps all the, all the boats or however that, that phrase goes. But the, um, you know, so that's, that became my focus. And I, I do still push on stuff on Facebook, you know, and, but I know it's not going to do anything, you know, so, but I do focus a lot on my, on my connections with the podcast community. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, for you with the, with the guests that you get, because you get some people that have done some significant, you know, I was looking at your page and stuff. How, how do you kind of contact them? And, and how, how do you have recommendations for people for um, reaching out to people? Because that's one of the hardest things is, you know, breaking the ice sometimes trying to get somebody on that you want to have on. Yeah, I mean, it's like most people, a lot of people want to, you know, what I mean, and so it's just about asking. Everyone's like, how did you get it? I'm like, I just ask. You just ask, right? Sometimes it's like with famous people, you got to go through publicists or their managers and stuff like that. But um, I, I've been on Twitter a long time, so I am connected with a lot of people like Kato Kalen I had on from the OJ trial. And right. we've just been Facebook, for, uh, I'm sorry, Twitter friends for, I don't know, five years, you know, forever. And, um, and so, you know, it's, so he was cool and he came out, you know, so some things like that. And, I, I found also people love to refer people they know to me, <laughs> like which is nice. You know, they think because then they can throw their cloud about knowing someone. Uh, but it is it is just about um, about asking. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about asking. I think most people want to do things, and I've I've gotten guests where like I've gotten no or ghosted, and then I'll ask again three months later, and they're like, "Yeah, sure," you know, and they great. You know? yeah. So it's just because they say no one time, it may not be the right time for them. You don't know what's going on mm -hmm. in their lives and stuff like that. So, I mean, I've asked people to be on my show and they're like, oh, touch base in a month. And then the person dies, you know, because they, they didn't know if he was going to get better or not. They didn't want to commit him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's happened twice. But, no, oh. but granted, I usually ask older people to be on my show. <laughs> it's not like young people are dying. It's so just so you guys know. <laughs> Uh, it's a curse but uh but yeah it's just about asking i think people love to uh, uh talk i had uh one time asked this older guitar player and he plays like at large gigs a lot and um uh, he messaged me back and said what the hell you want to enter me for <laughs> yeah people yeah. do that you know people you know people feel that way but it's like that's where you have to be. You have to be a good interviewer. If you get someone like that on, and you have to kind of really know. Like when I I prep for hours for my interviews because I like to really really get deep because that's how you can really kind of um, you can really get them to talk and say things that I don't know how you guys. When I prep for an interview, I'll listen to them on other mm -hmm. podcasts, and if they you know people tend to do they have their own tropes, so they'll they'll say the same thing over and over again. And, they'll, and they have specific stories that you can hear on every one of their podcasts. And so my goal is always to 
either I try to step on that so they can't, or I start with something very weird to get them not in the same pattern. pattern. And so, you know, and it's a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, I was talking, you know, I had this, this one actor was on the show and then this, and I'll go, Oh, was that, you know, Bobby oh. Collin or whatever. And like, you know, so, you know, then they're like, Oh geez. <laughs> Cause they're not used to, if you want to win the game, you just, you have to be prepared. And yeah. once they know you're prepared, then they'll feel more comfortable with you. I mean, I, I saw someone interviewing Carol Baskin, you know, Carol Baskin from Tiger. They hadn't seen Tiger King. I'm like, why are you interviewing Carol Baskin if you haven't seen Tiger King? <laughs> well, I didn't want to, you know, preconceive. No, I'm like, it's the only thing she's done. I mean, that's the thing, you know, you know what I mean? But she's great stuff with Big Cat Rescue and stuff. That's not what I mean. But, but that's why she's famous. Right. So how could you not watch that? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it, you know, it just, you know, it's stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, anyway, but just ask, yeah. I think. I, li I like that idea, though, because it's true, because a lot of people, when you're interviewing people, it's kind of like if you go to casting calls, you know what I mean? Like, they already are going to hear the same things out of the same people. They're looking for something different. <laughs> you know, when people be interviewed all the time, they all kind of go into, like, their, you know, and you want to get to the personal level, like, you know what I mean? So for me, I, a lot of times, like to invite people on that I actually have a vibe with. Like, I like their content, or I like what they do, or with social media, you kind of sometimes feel like you know people if they're active on it, so... You know, a lot of times I go after people that I actually want to get to have a deeper conversation with. Like, I feel like, oh, I vibe with this person or I like what this person does or I like this person's story. And um, I think it is true, though, because when you when you know things about them, they're kind of like, oh, shit, you know that. And you're just like, well, yeah, like, you know, that's kind of like if I'm going to interview. You, I, I should know something about you. So uh, that's that's great advice, Jeff. And I, I like the fact that you kind of throw them off a little bit like, damn it, I can't just give them the same old, same old. I have to like, sit there and get a little deeper with, uh, with them. I'd say one trick is like you go look at, especially if they're, well, whether they're younger, it depends how old they are. But if they're like 40 or 30s or older, they probably have some really old, embarrassing YouTube videos out there or <laughs> clips. The best information is clips from old um, interview shows, if they've ever done stuff like that, or old, old stuff, because it's usually stuff they don't talk about anymore. And so then you can kind of tap into some of that and then. They to them it's all fresh and new because they probably haven't talked about it in six years and then <laughs> so. I love it. So um you know, real quick, I don't wanna to take too much of your time as far as like getting through the creation, uh with like your daily life, your work life, you know, your personal life. What's a couple of things that y'all do to like get through the creative part? Uh, well, I'll tell you, prep, the greatest thing I've learned recently, and I should have known about it for longer, is two times speed. <laughs> you can listen to podcasts at two times speed or YouTube videos at two times speed. You can get through, well, it's tw content in twice, as, twice the, uh, you know, in half the amount of time. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing. And so, uh, you know, because that's a lot of it. I would watch things and or listen to things and you know, if it's 30 minutes, it's 30 minutes, but now we can get it done in 15 minutes. And so same thing with podcasts. Sometimes you have to listen to one and a half speed because if a person naturally talks fast, yeah. two, two times turns them into or into a, uh, uh, <laughs> a chipmunk. But, uh, so you gotta, yeah, but if you can handle two times, it's amazing. What you can get, you can, you can listen to two one hour podcasts while doing a one hour walk. It's great. You know, so stuff like that. So. That's, great, that's, that, that's my big tip of the day. So. That's a great tip because it is true when you're watching stuff or listening to stuff, it is it's, it's time consuming and there's certain people that you like to just hear their weekly stuff, but then you're trying to do your own stuff and then you're also trying to find new people. So it is, it's a lot of, uh, it can be a lot of time burnt up, that you, it, which is true, which is part of the thing, just finding the people that you want to have a conversation. Yeah, that's, that's a great tip. I love that. Right. Yeah. Any questions you want to ask each other? Um, I think I definitely want to go check out a lot of your stuff because it sounds like stuff that I'm interested in. I, um, I like the comedy aspect. I, I, you know, I think it's interesting to see different people's personality. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out more of your episodes. I, I started following you, saw your page, but I definitely want to hear some of these episodes and these conversations, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you, and you need to restart. Just restart. <laughs> Get back into it. I know. Uh, I feel bad. She can't get back on. She says it's not letting her rejoin the live. So that's a bummer. You know, 
um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think that I think one of the biggest things is, is uh, there's so much opportunity for so many different conversations. Like it's funny into the podcast world. There's so many niches and so many different things. And I love hearing the different things at the bar, like what people listen to. Like I listen to true crime and I listen to this and I listen to that. So I think it's I think it's um, a really big market that's interesting because it gives a lot of opportunity for people that have interests to hear more about their interests, you know, because I feel like social media kind of only gives you what they think you want to hear. So right. when you get the podcast world, you can kind of like look at this, like this big board of it's almost like being in like blockbuster or movies. And you can be like, Ooh, what are all these conversations that I want to get into today? So that's one of the things I do like about it. I think it gives people an, an opportunity to learn. Absolutely. Right. Cool. Jeff, I got uh, one question for you. Sure. Um, for your brand and your podcast, what do you use, like, personally, your uh, two favorite social medias? I use Twitter and uh, Instagram. Yeah, I think those those are my main ones, Twitter and Instagram. And then I've, I've got a big personal account on Twitter, so I, like, I can push it there. And I have a thing I do on Twitter for many years called Hashtag Roundup. So we do hashtags and... Uh, fun hashtags and so I read I pick a hashtag that we've done and I read it on my show at the end of the show it's sort of how I end each show and it's usually a hashtag that tied thematically into whatever I was talking about on the show and then that's a way that I I tell people hey I read your tweet on the show and you know get them to you know be aware of the show is in the podcast as well so that, that's one thing and then Twitter podcast is coming out soon so I'm hoping that's a good thing I don't know I think it's Twitter Blue has it now, but I don't have Twitter Blue. And yeah, and Instagram's the other one. Though I don't, I'm not big on Instagram. I mean, I, but I do push it. And so, you know, that's that. And then I try to do reels. Reels, I think, on Instagram is, is really much more useful than a post on Instagram, or just a picture post. Yeah. So I, I go through. I go through phases where I'll do a lot. <laughs> and then, uh, like, I was getting, like, thousands. And then I started getting, I got 10,000 on one. And I think I, you know, then I, then I started getting 300. So it was a little, <laughs> so it was a little, yeah, so I got I to gotta get back into that, though. I think they do that to you on purpose, though, to be honest. I think they give and they take away. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I got I to gotta get back into that. So. Yeah, because that's another thing, too, like, you know, repurposing the content, chopping it up, put it on the different platforms. Like, again, that's, it's, it turns into like a job, you know what I mean? So it gets, it gets time consuming. And I do believe Reels is like what, what's up right now. Like, you know, they all go through these phases, like this is the stuff that we want you to put out now. And like, and they really reward you when you put out what they want you to put out. And like the same thing, like if you don't stay consistent with it, then it'll drop back down. So it's, it's definitely like they want you on a lot. You know what I mean? So I, I definitely agree with that. You know, you get like, and it's so funny, like, what gets views and what does the same thing. You'd be like, why do they like that clip so much better than this clip? But you just never know. You just got to keep putting it out, really. I know. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> I, think it's, it's, I think it's like the right one person sees it, and then it blows up. And yeah. if they don't, you know, but <laughs> I don't know. Just keep I trying. Can. Yep. First, we know I really appreciate y'all for doing this. I don't want to take too much of your time. Oh thanks no! It's, we're happy to hang out with you. So thanks for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe nice we could do it again. All right. Yeah, for sure. Nice meeting, nice meeting y'all. <laughs>